Welcome back to this Thursday's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about how to feed your snakes, and I'm going to show you how I feed all of mine. Stick around. While we wait for those rats to thaw, let's talk about what feeding snakes is all about. Well, first of all, snakes, for the most part, will eat rodents. It's really hard to keep a snake that doesn't uh, eat rodents. Some things like garter snakes, for example, they want to eat things like fish and worms. And if you have an eastern hognose snake, unlike the westerns that I keep, they're going to want to eat toads and lizards, maybe vine snakes too. So you want to consider what your snake eats, first of all. Second of all, let's source your food in a proper way. Let's not spend all of your money just feeding your reptile collection. Here's the way to do it. Find a breeder, find a rat breeder in your area. So a rat breeder is probably going to breed mice too. And sometimes, like in my case, the guy that I buy from breeds quails. And this guy will deliver to me as well. His rats are about half the price as the local pet shop, the reptile store. Uh, they're about 25% of what it is at PetSmart to buy. And he delivers right to my door. And... He's a super wicked guy. So, all in all, that's the best way to do it. Save yourself some money, build a relationship, and sometimes that nice guy is going to have a good deal on something that you want to have. This bit is really straightforward. When you're feeding your reptiles, you want to thaw the mice out completely. Don't let your snake eat a frozen animal. This is going to be not good, obviously. These cold-blooded creatures should not be eating frozen-blooded mammals. That's not a good way to do it. So take your animals, put them into a cup or a tub or um, a bucket in my case, and you put some lukewarm water in. Don't put the water too hot because it's going to cook them. Don't put the water too cold because you will die of old age before they are ready to feed to your animals. And for all of you who are ambitious and want to save time, the best way to save time is to thaw your rodents out right in the room that you're about to go in and scoop the poop out of, right? No, that's the best way to get your hand bit. Don't do that. In my opinion... The one thing that you should not do is thaw your rodents in your reptile room because all your snakes will start going crazy and don't stick your hands in your reptile enclosures once those things have been thawing because your hands likely smell like rats still or there's rat scent in the air and if you have a overly eager eater you might get bitten. This is how most western hognose snake attacks. Uh, this is when you get if you get bit by a western hognose it's generally a food response and a lot of the times it's because you just touch rats or there's rats thawing um, or mice is what I feed my westerns. So do all your reptile work before or after. Just don't do it while they're thawing. Unless you like getting bit by snakes and you want to put up a bunch of clickbait for your YouTube videos. Size is another concern too. When you're thinking about feeding your snake, make sure that for most species, the size of the feeder is about the same size as the widest part of the snake. Pretty simple stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, feed these animals. So let's go ahead. I'm going to narrate how these are going and show you over top of me talking how I think they're going to go. I'm recording this part before I actually feed them. Our Bach here, he is going to just hiss and uh, not strike at the food. I'm going to have to leave it in there for him, which is okay. You can leave the rodent in there. If it's not gone in a few hours, check it in the morning. If it's not gone, toss it. Or if you have a garbage disposal animal like a tagu, for example, or savanna monitor, Feed the rodent that's about to start decomposing to that animal. Ekans is hit and miss. She might go ahead and grab it right off the tongue. She might miss 37 times. Or you might have to leave it for her because she's going to run away from you. Who knows? Nikki here, who recently found out is a boy. Lately, he's actually been pretty good about taking it right off the tongs. If not, you leave it in there and he'll go ahead and eat it roughly 5 minutes after you walk out of the room. Moving on to the ball pythons. Medusa here. Uh, she only eats live. I fed her yesterday, and I'm not going to show you a live feeding because as much as I'd love to have more views on these videos, it's not worth showing you an innocent animal being suffocated to death and then swallowed whole. So let's move on to Pikachu. Pikachu, generally, he's one of those ones you got to toss it in there. I don't even really try to feed him off the tongs. Moving on to the Boa Constrictor. This one's a little bit different. She has the worst aim. This is the Ray Charles of animals. So Stevie Wonder here, I just toss in the rat. She strikes at the glass or enclosure or hides. She strikes at everything but the rat. By the time I come back in the morning, the rat's gone. She's figured it out. 
But for now, we're just gonna let the blind snake do her own thing. And that leaves us with Maisie, the corn snake. And if you didn't see last week's video, right here, nope, right here, this is how she got her name. Check out the very end. We named her last week. It's a dad joke. You'll see. I've never fed Maisie before. This will be the first time that I feed Maisie. I've only had her for a little over a week now. So I have no idea what's going to happen. Might have to leave it in there. She might be striking at it right now. I don't know. But that is the last animal in my collection that we're feeding today. And since you were so nice to watch all the way through the video and watch all of the feedings, here's a little surprise. We're going to check to see if we've got some leopard gecko eggs. And uh, well, I'm just going to cut this part out if we don't. So if you're... Let's check out the leopard gecko eggs. Oh, what do you know? We got some leopard gecko eggs. I thought both of the gravid females were gonna pop out some eggs today, but only honey did, which is fine. So here's my little container with all the leopard gecko names on the top here and the eggs inside. So before I even open it, I'll write her name. Honey, today's date. And plop them inside. It looks like we're going to start having some little baby leopard geckos in the next few days. Um, well, it depends. I incubate them kind of low temperature because I want females. So they'll probably come out at the 55 day mark. And we're at day 46 right now. So last year I think I had one come out as early as day 50. So I guess we're going to find out. That's this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all the support. If you like this video, consider hitting subscribe. We're going to do new videos twice a week, every Monday, every Thursday, which means I'll see you on Monday.